Welcome back to The Charismatic Voice. I recently heard Chino Moreno sing for the first time in a duet with Maynard, and he was fantastic. He actually added to one of the best prog vocalists that I've ever heard. So I want to hear more. This time we're going to return to the Deftones with just Chino singing so I can really get into his vocal line more. Let's get to it. interesting effects going on in his voice, but then there are also so many effects that he's just making himself at a laryngeal level. It's like such an interesting sound. I, it almost feels dizzying the way that his voice is produced physically and electronically here. I'm going to go back to the beginning. Ooh. It's so moody. So what I'm hearing is just tons of play with air, which is really cool. And I, I know I mentioned this in Passenger some too. It's like, it's the way that he's playing with, if the air is starting a phonation, if we're going to start getting this regular oscillation, essentially the vocal folds coming in and out periodically, if they do it regularly, very quickly, we get an actual pitch, right? So the vocal folds go wacka, 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 440 times per second. That's very fast. Then we get concert A, right? Um, he plays with the sound of the air going through his vocal tract. And with if it creates that phonation or not, or if it triggers some other kind of sound source in his, sound source in his vocal tract, he's playing with that as like the main element of his expression that I'm hearing. It's really, really intriguing to me because it makes me think of, oh, what else can, what other kinds of sounds am I gonna hear come out of him because he's just so creative in how he's using his air. Do notice that in order to do this, you still have to take that fundamental step of taking a good breath in to create a sound. So it's so interesting. Whenever we go back to vocals across genres, one of the things I consistently see in great singers is that they take a deep breath. That's the first step to great singing. Anyhow, I'm going to go back and uh, listen to a bunch of these really interesting usages of air again one more time. He almost uses his air like that sound that just came in in places. So just in this bit, hi, 
he does like a cr kind of a creak into it, even a little bit of valley girl fry into the sound. And then ch he, in change, he adds a little puff of air too before it goes into true phonation. I watched you change. change. And then there's this like airy thing, whispery thing in the background too. Oh, and then listen on fly, he goes into air after the phonation as well. So he doesn't only do air preceding phonation, but also afterwards. Huh. Same thing there, preceding and after. Huh. Oh. oh my gosh. His vocals are fascinating. Super fascinating. The layering here, so it's definitely got a double on it and they're not sung in the same way. It sounds like one of them is just a uh, harsh vocalization, not containing any true pitch. Oh, that's so creepy. Um, the way that he's layered his vocals and doubled them is incredible. I love hearing where he's choosing to use just a harsh vocalization versus uh, clean, right? Sometimes there's still a little distortion in those cleans, but they've got that true pitch in them. Very, very interesting. He's playing so much with this creakiness, like a croakiness in his voice as well. Wow, just super fascinating. I think it'd be really interesting to take him and compare him to Dimash Kudai Bergen because both are making so much use of this edge between air and phonation and where does it turn into a pitch and how much can they get away with. It's a very different genre that both are singing in, uh, but they're playing with a similar vocal technique right there. So creepy. Ooh. Oh, so I'm sorry, I want to hear that moment again. Right. They're just like, oh, that's like a sliding down subtle backing vocal in there. Wow. The layers are so fascinating. This is such an interesting video and sound overall. And I just realized, I think a lot of people would think this is really easy to do. They're like, oh, he's just pretty much whispering. But it can often be harder to sing with this sort of sustained intensity in a quiet way. A lot of people find it much easier to just belt things out. Uh, and that's definitely me included. Like it's much easier for me to belt out a dying scene than just float something. And <laughs> to be able to sustain that float and come up with all kinds of little creative intricacies in it too, that's, that's just really entrancing and it's difficult. It's not just whispering. When you create a really soft sound, that tends to not involve a ton of breath pressure, 
right? But it can be difficult to get that phonation going without as much breath pressure. You actually have to kind of train to learn how to have a quiet, sustained sound. It's, it's something you'd have to work on. So I'm hearing him with this sort of whispery tone and I'm, I'm in awe of it, right? It's not an easy thing to do. Let's go back a little bit. Such specificity with the enunciation. Oh, that's just belting it out now. so disturbing about this music video the way that people it's almost like it's actually how a lot of people feel at the party it, <laughs> I think that's a statement they're trying to make but I feel like there are a lot of statements that could be taken from here um, some people love parties don't get me wrong and some people are just there because they feel like they have to be there <laughs> And the way they, they speed up and play with time is so fascinating. You can hear that in the band too. Wow. Whoa. I love the way that these sort of sighs have come in because I feel that that's where a lot of his vocalization is coming from is this feeling of a sigh, um, but maybe learning how to control the flow that's coming out of a sigh. If you use the idea of sighing in general to help learn how to catch the wave of air on your breath and get your voice going, it can be very, very useful as far as starting up a clean reliance on breath flow. He's using it extremely, extremely well in here. And sometimes the sighing feeling has more flood of air. And then there are other times when he's belting it out where we hear a little more closure, a little more like a poncho, a little more leaning on some support as well. And just more of a powerful focused sound than <sighs> one more time from here. Yikes. That's such a great example of finding that line between breath and phonation. It's so interesting. And you can hear how he's just like trying to sustain this sort of no man's land in between. <laughs> okay, so if you think about it, oscillation, which right back again to those vocal folds when they go wacka, 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 440 times per second for a concert aim. That means that in this like second that he was singing this note, we heard it kind of fuzz in and out a, a few times. It had started to go at that rate of 440 times per second, but it just barely faded in. And so we didn't actually have a whole second of it. We had like split pieces of it where it was at that rate for just a millisecond. It's so fascinating to me how he's able to control that. It's, <laughs> it's a crazy, crazy 
vocal edge to ride. like listening to this feels like you should be in this almost weird distorted environment smoky hazy everywhere it it feels like it's stretching reality in some way it's fascinating even in his voice I feel like he's stretching time in some way with the way he's playing with oscillation or not Ugh. fascinating I feel like this it's just such this a ton of creativity. I don't, I don't, it's hard to put it any other way. It's just fascinating and creative. And I think that they're exploring music in a really awesome and unique way. Oh, wow. Oh. There's like two different pitch bends happening in that layer of vocals there that feel wonky. Ooh, ah. Whoa. Oh, what? Is that a game? <laughs> the board game part of me is really excited about whatever is there. Um, it's like he had a trip, right? I imagine all this. The animal masks felt super creepy at the end, but the way that these sides are coming into here, it feels almost like we're, it's like a little Alice in Wonderland moment, right? Complete with all of the strange psychedelics. Whoa, you even see in the reflection, you can see it right behind him, the red, it's like a person in red that walks away. Red pill, blue pill. Whoa. Whoa. No, one more time. Amazing. Wow, crazy. The thing that makes this song even more nuts is that the band essentially composed this like free jazz. At one point, Chino said, nobody told anybody else what to do. It all just came out freely. Like, that's just, it's crazy. And I guess the chord progression wasn't wild, it wasn't like prog dream theater nutso, but it has such a strange moody vibe, it has definitive switches, and it just has so much creativity in it, especially with those vocal lines and the layering. It's really mind boggling to me. I'm very, very curious. Uh, if you wanna go back and watch that first time that I heard Chino. I'm going to link you to that. In addition to that, I'm going to link you to some other tool things in this playlist because I think there's a lot of overlap between the two. And may you fall more in love with music every day.